Before going into the stability properties of non-linear systems, I will talk a little about the control problem that you are faced with as a control engineer to show the relationship between this and the stability analysis that you will learn to perform in this course. The control problem that we are typically faced with is that we are given a physical system, often called a process, that needs to be controlled. The system has some inputs that we may use to control the system and some outputs given by the sensors which tells us about the state of the system. And we're given a set of specifications of the desired behavior of the system. This could be to keep the temperature of a room at a constant reference value, the concentration of a substance in the chemical process at a certain value, or keep the speed of a car constant when designing a cruise controller, or alternatively, the distance to the car ahead should be kept constant. The control problem is to find a control law that makes the closed-loop system behave according to these specifications. The first thing we do to solve this control problem is to create a mathematical model of the system, describing the system dynamics by a set of differential equations. And in the previous set of video lectures, you learned how to validate such models with respect to existence and uniqueness of solutions. Then we can design a control law and plugging this control law into the mathematical model, we obtain the resulting closed-loop system dynamics. This we can then analyze to check that the specifications are met and the closed-loop system dynamics is well behaved. Other times, we start with the analysis and based on this, we choose the control law to obtain the desired closed-loop system behavior or we design a control law, we analyze the closed-loop system, and this shows that the system behavior is not as desired, and then we have to go back and redesign the control law. So we may need to go a couple of times back and forth before we are satisfied with the control law and the properties of the resulting closed-loop system. Finally, we implement the control law. The control problem can be divided into two main classes, the regulation problem and the tracking problem. Let's first have a look at the regulation problem. For regulation problems, the control objective is to keep the states at a constant reference value. We have developed a process model, a set of ordinary differential equations that describe the dynamics of the system that we want to control. The control law design consists of finding a control law, gamma, which in general may include time-varying signals, like feed-forward from the reference signal, and feedback of the states of the system. The control law should be designed such that the closed-loop system has the desired behavior, and the closed-loop system is what we get when we plug in the control law into the process model, substituting gamma for u. The resulting function on the right-hand side we call f, and it is a function of time t and state x. So what is the desired behavior of the closed-loop system? When we analyze the closed-loop system, which behavior do we want to see? Well, first we want the constant reference value to be an equilibrium point of the closed-loop system. Being an equilibrium point means that when the state has this reference value, then the right-hand side of the closed-loop equation is a zero. This means that when the system state has reached this reference value, then the state will change no more. When the system states have reached this reference value, it will stay here for all future time. Secondly, we want to have convergence. We want the closed-loop system to converge to this equilibrium point. Finally, we want the system to stay close to this equilibrium point if it starts close to it. Say, for instance, that you are designing a control system for dynamic positioning of a ship. 
The constant reference state is the position and orientation shown here. And the initial condition of the ship is here. If the ship has to take a big circle before it converges to the reference value, then this is not a behavior that is desirable. The system does converge to the equilibrium point, but the behavior is undesirable. When the ship starts close to the reference value, we want it to stay close. For instance, converging like this to the equilibrium point. This kind of behavior, where the ship has to take a big circle to come around and back to the equilibrium point, or where a car that does parallel parking has to go around the block before coming back and converging to the desired parking spot, is behavior that you can see, for instance, when using a discontinuous controller strategy. Then the system has to go outside a certain area to avoid a singularity in the controller. That the system has these three properties is what we mean when we say that the reference state is an asymptotically stable equilibrium point of the system. We will express this mathematically later. So the regulation problem can be stated as find a controller such that the constant reference state is an asymptotically stable equilibrium point of the closed loop system. This is the asymptotic stabilization problem, and often we shift the reference state to the origin, such that the origin becomes the equilibrium point that we want to stabilize. The way we do this is that we perform a coordinate transformation. Specifically, we work with the error coordinates instead of the original x coordinates. We define the error coordinate E as the difference between the state x and the reference state x ref. Notice that this shifts the desired equilibrium point to the origin. When x equals x ref, then this is equivalent to the error e being zero. To find the differential equation describing the dynamics of this error coordinate, we take the derivative. The derivative of e is the derivative of x minus the derivative of x ref. And since this is a constant reference value, its derivative is zero. So we're left with the derivative of x, which is f of tx. One thing that is important to note is that when you do a coordinate transformation like we do here, from the old coordinate x to the new coordinate e, we cannot mix these in the differential equation. We cannot both operate with the old x variable and the new e variable in the same equation. So we cannot have x on the right hand side here. To get rid of this and replace it by e, we use that x equals e plus x ref, which we get from the definition of e. So the system written in the new coordinates is the derivative of e equals f of time t and e. And the constant reference x ref, but this just goes in as a parameter in the function. We saw that to solve the regulation problem, we want to find a control law that makes the constant reference state x ref an asymptotically stable equilibrium point of the original system equations, which corresponds to making the origin an asymptotically stable equilibrium point of the system written in error coordinates. When learning about linear control systems, you have probably always been stabilizing the origin, and the reason for that is that when you do the linearization using the Taylor series representation, you immediately work with error coordinates. So the regulation problem leads to an asymptotic stabilization problem. How about the tracking problem? In a tracking problem, we're given a time varying reference that the system state should follow. The system may, for instance, be a robot manipulator spray painting a car. This should then follow a time varying trajectory to evenly distribute the paint. Another example may be a ship, which is given a weather-optimal collision-free trajectory, which it should follow from one port to the next. The control problem is still finding a control law 
such that the closed loop system has a desired behavior. But what is the desired closed loop system behavior when dealing with a tracking problem? When the system state is on the trajectory, we of course want it to stay on the trajectory for all future time. Furthermore, we want the system to converge to the trajectory, and also here we want to have the property, which we later will see is the layup and stability property, that if the system starts close to the trajectory, it will stay close to it. It will not take a trip around the block before coming back and close again. You probably already recognize the similarities with the earlier case, and also the tracking problem can be expressed as an asymptotic stabilization problem. What we do is that we again define the error coordinate, now being the error between the real state and the time varying reference trajectory. The time derivative of E is the time derivative of X minus the time derivative of the reference trajectory. We substitute for x dot using the process model. And again, we cannot use two sets of states in the same equation, so x is replaced by e plus the reference trajectory, x ref of t, using the definition here. The right hand side here is a new function which we can denote fp bar and which is a function of the time t, the new state e and the control input u. Note that because the reference is time varying, the new process function will become time varying even if the original up here should be time invariant. The control problem is then to Find a controller gamma such that the origin is an asymptotically stable equilibrium point of the closed loop aerodynamics, that is, the differential equation describing the aerodynamics when we substitute the controller gamma for the control input u. And the right hand side will be a function of time and the error state. So both the regulation problem and the tracking problem lead to an asymptotic stabilization problem, that of finding a control law that makes the origin of e dot equals some function f of time t and e an asymptotically stable equilibrium point. And this is why analyzing asymptotic stability is so central in this course. In the following, we will define more precisely what we mean by asymptotic stability, and you will learn how to analyze the stability properties of a system. For simplicity, we will use x to denote the state, so we will make the definitions and analyze the stability properties of systems in this form. x dot equals f of time t and state x, with the equilibrium point of interest being at the origin. But now you know how to transform your system into this form here by using error coordinates.